Good morning. It's good to see you. Welcome to worship at Newton First United Methodist Church. We are not able to live stream this morning. The service is being recorded and will be available later in the day, so keep that in mind. We hope to have our live stream folks back with us next week. And uh, some of them are on the youth choir tour. They left this morning around 8 o'clock. And uh, we're in good spirits and looking forward to resuming that activity that we had to miss out on last year. I believe they're headed for Ashland, Alabama, if I'm correct with that. And a lot of what they're doing is close by. This year, they'll be singing for folks. They'll be serving in some mission work. They'll be enjoying their time together. So keep them in your prayers and know that they will represent us well. It's good to, to have that activity back once again. There are other announcements and concerns in the bulletin. Let me remind you of those, or if you'll turn to those for just a moment. There's a job fair for the first time in a long time. There's been much interest in that, and uh, we look forward to that on Thursday. Parents morning out. Uh, next week, the youth choir will be here for their homecoming concert, vacation Bible school, and the Braves game. All those things are close upon us, and uh, we're grateful for that, for those activities returning. And it's good to see all of you. It's good to see folks that I haven't seen in a long time every Sunday, seeing more and more folks who are coming back. And that's, that's exciting. It is for me. I hope it is for you as well. This past week was annual conference. It was done virtually. Some of you may have been a part of that. And some of you may have been able to watch the services. Yesterday, there was an ordination service. And then later in the day, a service of remembrance, a memorial service, those are available online at the North Georgia United Methodist Church website. I would encourage you, if you miss those, to take a look. Yesterday morning, our own Andrew Chapel was ordained an elder, and that was impressive, and those services always remind me of years ago when I was beginning. And uh, so congratulations to Andrew and, and to Adair, who. They're getting married this coming weekend, so a lot going on in his life and a lot going on in the life of this church. So continue to pray and just walk with us through these days together. God is up to some great things here, and it's an exciting time to be a part of this church. So thank you for your support. And now I would ask you to join me, if you will, in the call to worship. It's in your bulletin. Now is the time to rejoice. During every kind of trouble,
continue to worship together as we speak the words that we believe with the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life. worship with you this morning. My name is Andrew Chapel. I'm the associate pastor here at Noonan First and was ordained yesterday in Athens, the holy city. Uh, and uh, I had my family there and Adair was there and we're getting married this Saturday. There's a lot going on uh, this week. So if it seems I'm a little scattered this week when you see me, just know there's a lot going on. It was funny, yesterday after the ordination service, which takes two hours, my mom uh, said to Adair, well, on to the next big thing, and Adair said, lunch. And uh, <laughs> we were really hungry after that service, but it was a meaningful day, um, and I appreciate your prayers, and I appreciate just you and serving this community uh, during this time. We have our, our youth choir, like Charles said, out. I hope you will pray for them. Uh, they're doing the Lord's work, and they're having a good time. I, was, I got to be on the bus with them for a minute today. They're awesome. They're fun. And uh, we also have our ERT, our early response team and recovery team training uh, that we're looking to start. If you have any interest in joining to help us uh, help this community recover and also be available the next time there is a disaster uh, so that we can respond uh, um, well, uh, please uh, let us know that sign up is on our website, noonanfumc.org slash missions. Uh, just go on there and uh, sign up. We've been helping a lot of people as well. Every day, uh, the money that you have given to Tornado Relief is going to, to people needing places to stay. Again, the conversations I have on the phone with folks are, we've never been in this situation before, uh, and I don't know how to ask for help, but I need some. And because of your generosity, we have been able to help and continue to help this community recover. Now I invite you to take a deep breath, to close your eyes, and to join us as we take a moment for prayer. Gracious God, we are thankful for grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace that is greater than all our sin. We are thankful this morning that we are a people of grace, that you are a God of grace. God, we, we have specific things on our hearts this morning. There are concerns and, and things that we are losing sleep over, God. I pray that you would surround us, surround those concerns with your peace. I pray that you would surround those of our youth who have gone to sing their hearts out and to have fun. God, I pray that you would surround them, that you would use them to bring peace, to inspire those, to bring peace to others. God, I pray for our community as we continue to recover. This is a long road, God. And so may you inspire in us the desire to continue to help, to not get tired, but continue to move forward. God, we are seeing signs of resurrection in this community. And we know that we will continue to see that over the weeks and the months ahead. God, I pray that you would inspire within each of us when we see the recovery going on 
in our community to remember that resurrection happens in big and small ways everywhere. And that a long time ago, you sought to defeat death in the resurrection. God, we are a people of your grace. I pray that we would be vessels of that same grace to all that we meet every day. God, we pray all of this in the name of your Son. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you're able. Join as we sing hymn number 540, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. Will you stand as we sing?
Amen. Our scripture reading today comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 17. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you, Becky Hoffner Camp, for being back with us and helping with our music and for Kathy's direction today. Bonnie and David are away. And there was one other announcement I, I thought about that I'm aware of is Wednesday night, the Let's Talk group will be led by our own Joe McNabb. Joe has written a book, a novel called The Closet, and I'm looking forward to reading that, and he'll be at uh, Let's Talk Wednesday night, 6.30, to talk about that book and answer questions. So I hope you'll come around Wednesday night and, and spend an hour or so with us. It's good to be back with you. A few folks are asking where we were last week. I want to thank Danny Tomlinson and David Haygood for carrying on in our absence. Mickey and I were at a family wedding in Rome. And Andrew's mentioned Athens, another classic city, I suppose, by its name is Rome. And we saw in the museum up there that that name was chosen. It was drawn out of a hat. It was, I don't know what other names might have been in the hat. Uh, it might have been pretty scary. It could have been something else. But, uh, but Rome, Georgia. So we were up there doing as the Romans do. And, uh, but we're, we're back. And it's good to be back. I missed you all last week. June is a time when I want us to think about membership. What does it mean to be a member and also a disciple, a part of the body of Christ? The passage was read a moment ago about the importance of all members being part of the body. And we all have something to bring. We all have gifts to share. We all have so much that is needed by the church. And the church is so needed by the community and this broken world. I read a book a couple of years ago by Tom Rayner called I Am a Church Member, and so that's where the idea for this series came from. Next week, of course, is the Youth Choir Homecoming Concert, and then on the 20th, we're going to be talking about a unifying member, why that's important, and on June 27th, an unselfish member. So I want us to explore membership for the month of June, <clears throat> talk about that together, and see what the implications are for us as God's church at this time in this place. Membership, when I hear the term, I can't help but think of the television commercial of a few years ago. You remember the one that said, membership has its privileges. Well, indeed it does. But it also has its responsibilities, whether we're talking about the country club or the homeowners association or the civic club or some fraternal organization or you name it. As a rule, members are expected to show up expected to work for the good of the organization, expected to, quote, pay their dues. When these expectations are not met, membership is sometimes suspended or terminated. Part of that side of our human nature that shows up, I know it does in me from time to time and maybe in some of you as well, is that we have that desire for privilege without obligation. So let's think about membership now in terms of church membership specifically and even more specifically membership in the United Methodist Church and even more specifically membership in the Newton First United Methodist Church. Forgive me for committing what some folks would consider to be a cardinal sin, but I want to quote just a little bit out of the United Methodist Book of Discipline. Normally we don't do that on Sunday morning too much. 
But there's a lot there regarding membership. There's some interesting things there that we don't look at very often. In fact, in one part, the discipline is labeled church membership, and there's a paragraph that speaks of eligibility. And it says, the United Methodist Church is a part of the Holy Catholic, little c, Catholic meaning universal, like in the Apostles' Creed, a part of the universal church. In the church, Jesus Christ is proclaimed and professed as Lord and Savior. All people may attend its worship services, participating in its programs, receiving its sacraments, and become members in any local church in the connection. And then the next paragraph says, the membership of a local United Methodist Church shall include all people who have been baptized and who have professed their faith in Christ. The baptized membership of a local church, we used to call it full membership. We used to talk about preparatory members and full members, and now we talk about baptized members and those who are a part of the church, the universal church and, and the United Methodist Church. All baptized people who have received Christian baptism in any congregation, in any mode. I know there's so many stories about methods and modes of baptism, and we get sometimes in a little different way of looking at things from our brethren and sisters and other churches, but that's okay. Christian baptism in the local congregation or elsewhere, or those whose membership has been transferred into the United Methodist Church from another congregation. The professing member, baptized members, and then professing members, or local church shall include all baptized people who have come to membership by profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and who have answered the appropriate questions in the baptismal service, and we'll refer to a couple of those vows in just a moment. And then another paragraph about the meaning of membership. Christ constitutes the church as his holy body by the power of the Holy Spirit. The church draws people unto itself that they might remain faithful to the commission of God and proclaim and exemplify the ways of God. Baptism is a sacrament of initiation into the body of Christ. After baptism, the church provides nurture that makes possible a lifelong of growing in grace Touring in our faith, moving toward perfection, as John Wesley would say. Not perfection in that we don't make any mistakes, but perfection in love, maturity in love, spiritual maturity. That lifelong process of growing in God's grace. And then another paragraph, when persons unite as professing members of the local United Methodist Church, they profess their faith in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, and in the Holy Spirit. So they make known their desire to live daily lives as disciples of Jesus Christ so that others may know and be blessed. They covenant together with God and the members of a local church to perform, to keep those vows that they take when they become a part of this body, a part of this organization through confirmation, reception into the church. Let me remind us of some of these vows. Sometimes we forget our vows Sometimes married folks do, and there are a lot of difficulties with that, and vows we take in other places and in other ways. But I want us to think about vows that we take, becoming a part of this church, things that we say that are important. There are seven of them that I've listed. There are more, but let's think about these for just a moment. To renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, to reject the evil powers of this world, to repent of our sin. Number two, to accept the freedom and grace and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression. Number three, to confess Jesus Christ as Savior, to put our whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as our Lord. Number four, to remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and to serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Number five, to be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in our power to strengthen its ministries. And six, to faithfully participate in its ministries by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And then number seven, to receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. 
And there are many more paragraphs in the discipline dealing with membership and privileges and responsibilities. And anytime you'd like to talk about any of those, if there are folk who sometimes come to a church for a long time and it takes a while before they actually become members. And I'd love to talk to you about membership in this church and what that means and what it means now and in the days to come. So know that you're welcome in this place. We need the strengths and the gifts and the graces that you bring. And if you know of others who would like to have this conversation, please, please let me know and we will we'll talk about that. Membership, discipleship. Let's talk a little bit about discipleship because it connects here, or I hope it does. It does in my heart and in my mind. What about discipleship? A disciple is a learner, a follower of someone. And when we use the term, we're talking about being followers of Jesus the Christ. Like membership, discipleship has privileges and it has responsibilities. We need to think about both. We have an ongoing opportunity to draw closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a privilege that is. And others sometimes don't take advantage of that. It's always available for us. We have ongoing opportunities and we have an opportunity always to live for him every day of our lives. And some folks even have opportunity to die for him. So what a responsibility. Discipleship can be a costly enterprise. It can be one of those ships that's not always destined for smooth sailing, so to speak. We're called to follow Jesus. And Jesus does not always take the wide, the broad, the easy way. But sometimes the narrow road, which is more difficult to distinguish, and is full of potholes and dangers along the way. Jesus doesn't always climb aboard a boat when the sailing, when the waters are smooth, but sometimes is in the boat with us when the waters are choppy. No, I take that back, not sometimes, but always. In Luke chapter 5, and you might want to go back and, and read this, check it, out, check it out, if you will, when you get a moment. There's an encounter between Jesus and his best-known follower, his best-known disciple, Simon Peter. Jesus was standing beside the Sea of Galilee. He was preaching and teaching. The crowd was pressing in on him, and they wanted to hear the word of God. And he noticed a couple of boats on the shore. So he got into one of the boats belonging to Simon Peter and asked him to put out into the lake a little ways. And then Jesus sat down and taught. And when he had finished speaking, he instructed Simon to head for the deep water and to let down the nets. Simon Peter said, Lord, we've been at this a long time. We've been fishing all night long and we haven't caught anything. But if you say so. And they caught so many fish that the nets were breaking and both boats were full of fish and they were to the point of I'll start to say stinking with that many fish, but they were at the point of sinking. All those fish, and it was in that Simon Peter fell at the feet of Jesus and said, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. And he was so distraught. He felt his unworthiness in such a powerful way. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching people. And when they returned to the shore, they left everything, everything to follow Jesus, to be a disciple. One of the difficulties, I think, of being a disciple is that sense of inadequacy that threatens to overwhelm us sometimes. Our own sinfulness, our own brokenness, our own inabilities. When in the presence of the Holy One, it's a feeling similar to what the prophet Isaiah felt. And you may remember this call story from Isaiah chapter 6 and beginning with verse 1. Let me read just a few verses here talking about inadequacy that we feel when Jesus calls us to be a member of his body, to be one of his disciples, and we just don't think we're worthy. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. 
And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. Send me. We feel so inadequate. Isaiah was made aware of his own uncleanness, his own unworthiness being called by God. But God cleansed him and God used him. God's grace prevails. And if we will accept that grace in our hearts, then we are cleared for discipleship. And when we think about discipleship, a book always comes to mind, a 1937 book, a way back when book, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, or some say Dietrich Bonhoeffer, wrote this book. And he had this to say about grace. Such grace, he says, is costly because it calls us to follow. And it is grace because it calls us to follow Jesus Christ. It is costly because it costs a man his life. And it's grace because it gives a man and woman the only true life. It is costly because it condemns sin. And grace because it justifies the sinner. Above all, it's costly because it costs God the life of his son. You were bought at a price, he reminds us. And what has cost God much cannot be cheap for us. Above all, it is grace because God did not reckon his own son too dear a price to pay for our life, but delivered him up for us. Costly grace is the incarnation of God, he said. Without the grace of God, there's no discipleship. Membership, discipleship. Is it possible to be a member of the church and not a disciple? Yes, we can be casual members, interested only in privilege and not responsibility. Is it possible to be a disciple and not a church member? Yes, it is, but it is not possible to be a disciple by ourselves. And I know of no better vessel, no better way, no better group to help us become disciples, to empower us, and to encourage us as followers of Jesus Christ than the church that belongs to him. Membership, discipleship, perhaps our sense of unworthiness keeps us from being the faithful followers that Jesus has called us to be, keeping us from being faithful church folk. And when I was pulling this together, I thought about a conversation I had with a man in our in my last appointment in the community. He was not in the church. And we were talking one day, and he asked me a question that kind of caught me off guard. He said, y'all take sinners down at that church of yours? And I said, yes, sir. That's the only kind of folk we take. Romans 3.23 reminds us that we've all sinned and all Fallen short of the glory of God and only grace, costly grace, that is only grace that is greater than all of our sin makes us worthy. Membership, discipleship, it's not an either or kind of thing. It's a both and thing. And grace is the only ticket that will get us on that ship. Amen. As we enter into our time of giving this morning, I want to remind you uh, that you can give online and through text message and through the boxes at the entrances and exits of the sanctuary. Um, we are so thankful for the generosity of this church that continues to be in mission with this community and serving, uh, serving Noonan. So thank you so much for what you give and how you give. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we give of our resources to you, 
May we do so with full hearts, knowing that you gave much for us. In Jesus' name, amen. The great thanksgiving, the prayer of consecration for Holy Communion, your responses are in your bulletin, or if you choose to follow along in the hymnal, we're on page 13. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. And a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come in. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. I hope each of you were given one of the little communion cups when you came in. The day is coming soon when we will be back to our main way of doing communion. I look forward to that day. But until then, if you'll peel off the top layer, and there should be a wafer there, if you can take that, the body of Christ broken for you. And the bottom layer will peel back, and there is the juice there to remind us of the blood of Christ shed for us.
closing hymn number 365, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Would you stand as you are able? benediction and please remain for the benediction response. Go in peace and may the peace of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you and be with you from this day forward and forevermore. Go from this place knowing exactly whom we're called to follow. Go in his name. Amen. Amen.